Good morning. Well, I'm standing today outside of City Hall here in Jerusalem in a great big plaza which is set here where they often have meetings and uh, outdoor uh, assemblies to talk about things and celebrate different events. I'm just turning around so you can see this plaza. Quite a large area, not many people walking around, but all around here there are the political offices dealing with the city and the, the affairs of the city. Next Sunday is, of course, uh, Passion Sunday. And the gospel we have next Sunday talks about the healing of Lazarus. Now, I, as I walk around Jerusalem, I've been challenged to think about the healings of Jesus and wonder why they took place and what was happening when they took place. Think, first of all, with me, if you don't mind, about the healing of the cripple at the Pool of Bethesda. Now, he'd been there for 38 years. So the chances are Jesus would have walked past him or seen the place where he was lying on many occasions when he came to Jerusalem with his parents. But he'd been lying there 38 years. Jesus doesn't go up to him and preach a uh, um, sermon at him or tell him how God can heal him. He just goes up to him and says, do you want to be healed? And the man had been there all that time. He said, well, I, I can't get down in the waters. He said, when... Uh, they disturbed, so I, I, I don't get my healing at that point in time. And then Jesus says to me very simply, well, um, pick up your bed and go home. He doesn't introduce himself or say anything about him. In fact, the man didn't know who it was. And again, you see, the amazing thing is that Jesus said this to him, knowing that he was going to annoy people because he was doing this on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. I mean, you, you didn't do this type of thing on the Sabbath. So it must be part of Jesus' intention to do it in that particular way. Now, with the healing of Lazarus, which we're going to be talking about next, next Sunday, uh, Jesus and his apostles had gone away from Jerusalem because they said the Jews were attacking him and wanted to arrest him. But then uh, Martha or Mary writes to him and says, uh, He whom you love is sick. In other words, Lazarus is very ill. Now, they knew, they knew him. They knew he could heal at a distance. They knew the, he wouldn't have to come to the house in Bethany. He could just say the word and the man would be healed. He who will love is sick. Jesus doesn't do anything about it. He doesn't do anything about it. He waits two days until Lazarus dies. And then he says to the apostles, uh, we're going back to Bethany in Jerusalem. You now they say, well, you know, it's dangerous to go back there. He said, but Lazarus is, has died, and I must go and sort this, this out. You know, he waited, waited until Lazarus died. Then, of course, you, you've got that young, young man uh, who was born blind. Now, no one ever healed a person born blind. I mean, sometimes uh, out here in this area, you can get dust which will affect the eyes, and people will go blind very quickly with it. But uh, this man had been born blind. And the apostles, because of the theology of the day, said to him very simply, um, who's, what caused this? You know, is it is his sin or the sin of his parents that caused him to be born blind? And Jesus says, no, 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 you've got it wrong. And then he spits in some dust, makes a mud pack, puts it on the man's eyes and says to him, now go and wash in the pool of, in the pool of Siloam. And he went and he washed off the mud and suddenly... A man born blind can see again. He is challenged by the chief priest, this man. And he says, I, 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 I don't understand it myself. He said, I was born, I was blind, but now I see. They say, well, this man is not of God. He said, I don't know whether he's of God or not. But I know I was blind, but now I see. You know, there's something strange going on him. And of course, Jesus reaching the, the home of Mary and Martha, they come to him and they say, Lord, you know, we told you he was ill. We told you he was ill. You know, if you had come, you could have healed him. You could have healed him. And Jesus, looking around and seeing their grief, actually weeps with them. And then he says, show me where you've laid him. They take him to the place where they laid him. And he's, it's, it's, a, it's a tomb. They, they, they put him in these stone tombs and uh, roll the stone in front of him. You know, people don't realize that these tombs were, in fact, temporary structures for the dead bodies. 
they left them there for about 12 months or 24 months until all the flesh had uh, rotted off the body and then they went in and cleaned it up and took the bones out and buried them elsewhere. This was part of what was happening here at this time. They put the body in there, it been four days by, by no special treatments for the body except for the anointing with oils. But uh, as Martha says to him, if only this time there's going to be a stench when Jesus says to them, take the stone away. He said, I am the resurrection of life. I am the resurrection of life. And now I'm going to show you what that means. Lazarus come out. You know, strange happenings around this place. And as I walk around, I think about them. You know, there was a man by the beautiful gate, for instance, that Jesus never healed. He'd been there since he was a young, as a child. And he'd been begging by the beautiful gate. But he, let, he leaves it for Peter and John much later to heal this man. As they said to him, we don't have silver and gold, but what we have we give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they healed the man at that point. But you see, Jesus had walked past him. And there was all those other people in the pool of Bethesda. He didn't speak to any of them except that one man. And he does that on the Sabbath. Very strange things happening, and we think and pray about them on this week. Amen.